Hello, my name is Amy Kokenauer. I'm the reference librarian over at LV Johnson Library. Even though we are a brick and mortar institution, we're also doing as much as we can to be there online for all of our online learners. Right here, you'll see the main library page. If you have not been here before, from the main SPSU page, go to academic resources, click on library, and there you go. That's all you have to do to get here. We're pretty easy to find. On this main page, you'll find our tab search box. We've got our Hive search on the main part. Then Universal Catalog. This searches all of the university libraries in the University System of Georgia. There are about 35 different institutions, so that should give you an idea of what you're going to find here. To search in here, you can just do a simple search. And you'll see just a simple keyword search for technical communication brought up 4,446 items. Some of these are physical books, some are electronic books. There is also microform, journal, video, etc. If you want to borrow something from the Universal Catalog, there are a couple of restrictions. You can only borrow physical books. We can't lend out electronic books from other libraries because of publisher restrictions. Anything that you can't take out of a normal physical library, we can't borrow from another university library in the University of, of System of Georgia. So we couldn't borrow microform or journals or videos or things of that nature. Um, but you'll see as we scroll down, we can see what this one is. This one's at two different libraries, Technical Communication by John Lannan. We have it here at Southern Poly. It's also available at the University of Georgia. So let's say you're a Southern Poly student, but you don't live close to the Southern Poly campus. Let's say you live in Valdosta. You can log in. Make sure to log in as a Southern Poly student. Put in your 000 number. Type in your last name. And then enter your library PIN. Now that link will change to say Play Skill Express Request. So click on that. And what this will do is that will say you're a Southern Poly student, so you've logged in and you've authenticated yourself. You can change the pickup lot library. We just said that maybe you're closer to Valdosta. You can change it to Val Valdosta State because Valdosta State didn't have the book, but Southern Poly and University of Georgia did. That's one thing you can do. Um, right now, their default pickup location is the circulation desk at the second floor, but they also have a pickup in the communication arts department at Mass Media. So depending on how well you know the Valdosta State campus and their libraries, you can choose your pickup request that way. But that should give you an idea for how this works. Then we have LibGuides. I'll be going over that a little bit more towards the end. Lib Answers. Again, I'll go back to that. Your library account. This is how you can access library information online. You just need your student ID, your last name, and your library PIN. To get that library PIN, contact the circulation desk. Usually we need to scan the barcode on the back of your student ID. For distance learners, we can get around that just working with you on the phone and via email. Then you'll get to the link section. I want to go over this very quickly because while this Hive search box over here is great. It does have a problem in that if you are off campus, it's going to ask you for the Galileo password. However, if you don't like remembering separate passwords over here on the links section, you'll find this Hornet Connect. That is the VPN, the virtual private network. Most of you should already be using it. If you're not, start using it, please. You're going to find that to be a lot faster. It's the same username and password you use to access your email account and to access Vista. From here, click on Library Resources. This will give you access to all of the library resources off campus without having to remember the Galileo password. You can get into LibGuides that way, which will be useful if you want to use the search boxes in LibGuides. And you can get to all of the databases. You can get to the catalogs. And you can get to SPSU Hive Search. This is what SPSU Hive Search looks like on the main basic page. You'll find that right down here are different subject-specific profiles. So there's communication and journalism, math, science, and technology. Those will probably be most useful for you. Any of you looking for research in the workplace, you might like the business and economics one. Or if you're working in government offices, government and consumer info might be helpful. So play around with those subject profiles. They limit the searches a little bit more. Um, the Hive search is a discovery search layer. It searches multiple databases, publications, publishers. You end up with books, articles, websites, images, any type of source of information, it will search. So it will be a Google-like thing 
but it won't be exactly Google. Instead of getting millions and millions of hits, you'll get hundreds of thousands of hits, but they'll be more relevant to your search than Google will. You won't have random Joe Schmo's website about zippers coming up. Advanced search. I recommend that for everyone in a graduate level course. You want to be doing the advanced searching. You've got your drop down tabs that you can use and you have all these other information here. This database system, the Hive Search, does have databases in multiple languages. We specifically have some Korean and Japanese databases in here. If you do not want to receive articles in those other languages that you can't read, just go in here and limit it to English if that's what you prefer and that'll get you started. You also have the subject profiles down here. Right now we're searching in SPSU Hive Search. I could change it to communication and journalism and now it knows I'm searching communication and journalism. It does take me back to the basic search, so I do have to tell it I want to go back to the advanced search. So that is one difference. So be sure to do that. Instead of going into a lot of detail about how to use the Hive search, I'm going to ask you to watch videos that talk about the basic search page, the advanced search page, what you do with re your results, what about the detailed record. It talks about the facets and the different specialized widgets that we offer. So from here, I'm going to go back to the library's main page and talk about LibGuides really quick. You guys have a special LibGuide, and I really want you to use it. It's going to get you started in your search, and you really don't have to go anywhere else. Just go to Hornet Connect, go to Library Resources, scroll all the way down to the bottom, go to LibGuides, do the same thing that I'm doing right now. Click on your class's LibGuide. This is just for you. We also have information about distance access. There's a quick video here, how to use Hornet Connect, search strategies and source evaluation. Those of you who haven't done academic research for a while, some of these ideas might help you out. Finding books and articles. This page will be giving you the bulk of what you need. If you're not sure how to use any of these databases, we have tips right here on how to use it, how to use the Hive Search, how to use the catalog, how to use the eBooks database, how to use the Universal Catalog, how to use WorldCat, how to use Galileo, the aggregator itself, how to use JSTOR, how to use EBSCOhost provided databases, how to use ProQuest provided databases. So that Hive Search we were just in, here's a search box for you. That same search box that's available here, it's that same coding, it's just a different format that looks a little bit different so you can search in this box go into hive search from here if you prefer to search in the acm digital library here's a place to go for that ieee there you go same for jstor LexisNexis, academic this we already have limited to searching in news articles so once you get in there you'll want to change that um, that's because what most people are using LexisNexis Academic for here on campus is for news, but we have some who are looking up business information. So if you need to do that, be sure to change that. EBSCOhost databases. You might want to play around with these. ProQuest. Social Science and Research Library will be your best bets. Films on Demand. That's scholarly YouTube. So that's how you can use that one. If you came to LibGuides from this main library page and you forgot to go in through Hornet Connect, here's your warning. Remember to log in and we give you a link right to Hornet Connect. For searching the catalogs, let's say you really, really, really just want a book. There's the Universal Catalog, there's the Southern Poly Catalog, there's eBooks, there's WorldCat. WorldCat really is a catalog of books throughout the world. Um, it's made up of the libraries that talk to the OCLC and their information is in here. So if you're looking for information design and communication and you go to WorldCat, these are some books that you'll find. And you can see it found 105,479 sources. Some are articles, some are books, some are theses and dissertations, archival material, computer files, videos. These are coming from libraries, so you're going to be getting library type information from it. Let's say you want content and complexity. You want to know where to find it. It already has my zip code in here because I come here fairly often. It says, hey, you got that at Southern Poly. But it's also at Georgia Tech. It's also at University of Georgia. It's at Mercer University. So let's say I wanted to see if it was available out in Oregon. It is. It's at Oregon State. It's at a community college. So if you want to know if it's available where you're located, put in your zip code. And that's how you can use WorldCat. Other sources that you'll find here. Information about copyright and fair use. 
how do you know if a book that and source that you're using, if you're allowed to use it? This will give you some information about that. You want to be careful. You are doing academic research. You want to cite everything correctly. Otherwise, you're plagiarizing. There's a reference guide and a questions tab. If you have any questions, feel free to use that to contact us. You'll find the reference chat information for contacting me. I'm embedded in your course. So honestly, you can just pop a question on the Ask Amy discussion board thread and I'll be happy to answer you there. Use this. It's there to help you out. We also talked about Lib Answers. Lib Answers is our frequently asked question site. Oh, by the way, if you don't want to click Lib Guides here, you can search for it here. Likely going to find your classes under TechCom just because that's the old name for it. There it is. Lib Answers, you can view all topics. So if you have questions about how do you sort of connect, click on Go. It says, how do I access Galileo from off campus? Well, you access it using Hornet Connect. You can also have a question form. So if that's not the question that you wanted, just type in here any other question and it'll give you this question form. It will be emailed to four librarians, Aaron Weimer, who's the head of reference. I'll get a copy of it. Morgan Retz will get a copy of it. She's the nighttime reference and circulation librarian. And a copy will also go to Mark Gatesman, who is the reference librarian for the Georgia Highlands Marietta site here on SPSU's campus. And that's how Lib Answers works. I'll be sending you over to a couple other videos. One will talk about in more detail some of the other databases that you can get through the Galileo aggregator. Four of them will go into those details about the Hive search that I mentioned earlier. And we also have a scavenger hunt for you to go through to use these skills that I'm talking about in these videos in more depth. Thank you for listening.